thank you once again for joining us today at Matuka TV Studio. All right, today the God servant Apostle Arumi Osai unveils another powerful secret to the body of Christ on the issue of fasting and prayer. All right, um, well, but let me tell you, before your next fast, please pay attention to this clip that the God servant is about to unveil. As you listen to it, may God Almighty bless you. Amen. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 16. Before we go to that, I would like to solve a problem. Because I made a statement here yesterday on the subject of fasting and it, it generated controversies. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 16. Quickly. He said, Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child and thy princes eat in the morning. He said, if your king is a child, if the people that take decisions over the territory, of over your territory, are people that wake up to eat in the morning, say, whoa. That is to say if, okay, I don't need to interpret it. Let me leave it like that. The scripture is self-explanatory. He said, whoa, country. Meanwhile, the dietitian will always tell you that breakfast is gold. The dietitian will tell you that lunch is silver and dinner is lead. Eat breakfast like a king. Eat lunch like what? Like a saddle. No, it's dinner like a saddle. Eat breakfast like a king. People are denying me now. Eat lunch like what? Like a prince. And then you eat dinner like a servant. That means don't eat too much in the night. So that your, your stomach will not come and you have start having big stomach and you can't put, wear the button of your suit. Not because the, the, the button was not designed for you to wear it, but there's a, an arrangement. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, so the dietitians have given us a sequence of diet, but the Bible is saying, woo unto a land that is princes and babes. And they eat in the morning. There will be a challenge in your life when you cannot fast. The, your state is a state of woe. It means you are an accident looking for what to happen. It will obviously happen. And the reason is because you eat in the morning. <laughs> so I want to deal with the subject, that subject of fasting that I touched a little. And it generated um genesis chapter 3 verse 9 to 11. genesis chapter 3 verse 9 to 11. i told you about a brother that came here and i i spotted him in the congregation i took him to my office i said is fasting you are fasting you are fasting this fasting is beyond your measure it's the kind of fasting we do and you collide with the demon. He said, the thing is even, his chest is pain him. I say yes, because what you are carrying, what you want to carry, you don't have your legs, you don't have legs to carry it. <laughs> so he said, what will you do that you are going to be able to sleep? I say yes, that, that the thing you are sensing is not, is not a blessing. It's, it's a proof of danger knocking around the corner. And I told him, I will help you. Go to them. Sit this side. Sit this way. And when the anointing comes, I will, I will remove the heavy load. And don't fast like that again. So that was the statement I made that generated controversy. Said, eh? ah! Because of the A, eh, that's why I'm going here now. Genesis chapter 3, verse 9 to 11. Quickly. Genesis 3. And the Lord. God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. The diagnosis of that statement is in the next verse. He said, and he said unto him, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree? That's the diagnosis. Whereof I commanded thee that thou should, should, shouldest not eat. God's diagnosis of the use of the word be naked, because that naked is not in the lexicon, that word is not in the lexicon of life. 
you, you stumble on this world because you have entered into another knowledge faculty. And that knowledge faculty was occasioned by an eating. The whole issue of the fall today was tied to someone that ate what he was not supposed to eat. And then the entire humankind is a victim of someone's eating. Those days, I mean, in March, in the month of March, when uh, the thing about coronavirus, wash your hands and people will be doing like this. And the one young one boy now said, China ate meat and we are washing hands. <laughs> the, people that, the people that ate the raw meat, he said, yeah, it, we are just, we are going to we are going to wash it. Washing so, so what will you know? Now listen to me. This world has gone through tragedy because people ate. The New Testament perspective of this matter is the temptation of Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 that I read yesterday. I, 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 I wanted to take this thing easy, but Matthew chapter 4 is the New Testament position. The, the, this second Adam, this last Adam, was now given an opportunity uh, to redeem that position. And the devil came and noticed that he was hungry and suggested that he should use his divine power to command stones to become what? It was still supposed to be an eating matter. And Jesus said, Man, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So, yes, it is true I am hungry, but I am not regulated by my hunger. I am regulated by the governing voice of God that is spoken into my life. And that governing voice has not allowed me to eat, even though eating is legitimate. It is not something I can do because it's not the instruction of the governing voice. So we now saw a different kind of human being that could have a legitimate need to eat, but yet he is being regulated by a governing voice. And in saying that, Jesus revealed how humankind was designed to operate. He said, man, that means humankind, was not designed to live by bread only, but by the proceeding word of God. That means, for us believers, food is not necessarily a priority. We can keep food aside so that we can attend to more pressing kingdom matters. If we want to do an anatomy of Jesus' fasting escapade, I will want to invite us to the book of Matthew chapter 4. Are you there in Matthew 4? Quickly. Matthew 4. Quickly. Matthew 4. And verse 1. Matthew 4 verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, it was afterward and hunger. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But the, the exercise I'd like us to do is to find all the other Gospels where there is an account of this, his fasting escapade. Can we do that? Where is the look at our account? Look for verse 1. In the book of Luke chapter 4, verse 1, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, be, being forty days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. You know why I came to Luke? The reason is because in the Lucan account, there was no record that Jesus was not drinking. But we were sure that Jesus did not eat. So the biblical, classical definition of a dry fast is actually food 
no food plus water. That's a classical definition of a dry fast. Are you with me? Now, based on the type of fast you decide to adopt, I will give you guidelines for safe fasting. Because medical science has revealed that 78% of, of our body matter is water. So we live on water, literally. That's what it means. And if by any means uh, you don't have as much water as you need in your body, you're already setting up a situation that is counterproductive. So the Bible says in those days he ate what? Guidelines. If you are doing dry fast without water, and I need to tell you quickly, I need to tell you quickly, maybe you want to love God, you want to, you know, press into God and all of that, and you feel you want to do a dry fast, it's always recommended that you do three days. The one you will not take water. The three days is a recommendation for that. And just in case, after three days, you feel overwhelmed, by the presence of God and you intend to continue. You are allowed to continue, but your limit for a dry fast without water should be seven days. If you are going beyond seven days, it is recommended that you begin to take water. And I learned this one from master fasting men. This one is not scripture. I'm just giving you safe guidelines for safe fasting. In my own opinion, if you do a three-day fast, the power of a three-day fast is enormous. Most of you don't know. The kind of fast that, um, what's her name? Esther. The, the dry fast that Esther did. How long was it? It, it shook the government and, and tilted things in her favor. Just three days dry fast. If you have a problem that is so difficult that you cannot solve, I recommend three days dry fast. That's one of the easiest ways to move the hand of God. You must have a very good reason to go beyond three days. And the good reason is that God told you. If you are not directed by God, we have other modes of fasting that you can do, not dry. Exactly. Oh, you are not I, I love you guys. I want us to live long together. You don't know how many people we have dealt with in this place that their situation was occasioned by unguided fasting. Fasting doesn't give you a miracle. Fasting doesn't change God. Fasting actually changes you. It's a, it's a facility by which you can yield. You can adjust. You can find alignment the sensitivity that is in your spirit. So the recommendation is if there's a serious challenge the prescription is three days dry fasting. If you are you see, if, the if is very big if you are overwhelmed with the presence of God. What the presence of God does like Moses, he walked into the presence of God and forgot food. The presence of God can sustain your body without food. There's a dimension of the presence of God that can come upon you and you will not feel that you are not eating. You are not eating food. You can use that dimension to do seven days. Don't continue. If you are going to go beyond seven days, begin to take water. I hope I'm making myself clear. All right. So, we have two kinds of facts based on this my definition. We have, if it's above 14 days, it is a long fast. If it is below 14 days, it is a short fast. If you are doing without water, recommended time frame is 3 days. If it goes beyond 3 days and you feel the presence of God, if you begin to feel weak after 3 days, don't continue. It means you have reached the threshold, you have reached the limit. Any other thing that you are doing there is going to cause some damages. Are you still with me? Now, if you feel the presence of God and you want to do, go for seven days, that presence can take you for seven days. But it's not medically recommended for you to continue dry fasting after seven days. You must introduce water. If you introduce water, 
you we do that water only till 14 days you need a an express instruction from god to do any such fasting that doesn't involve food at all to cross beyond 14 days you need god to tell you to do it the type that you can do for 365 days even if god tells you or not is the one you break in the evening if you want a journey a spiritual journey six to six is okay go for 70 days you don't need to tell me people in somalia that's the way they eat they only eat in the evening the, the nation is so poor that you have to gather your resources and prepare for one meal right so some people in some poor places that one meal experience is all they have and they have grown till old age all right so if you want to do an adventure then take one meal per day and you can choose any time you want the meal to come you can choose to take the meal in the morning and then you don't eat till tomorrow morning you can choose to take the meal in the afternoon then maybe you don't eat till tomorrow afternoon anything that is convenient for the kind of job you do for the kind of thing you do go that's the principle of the long fast you must eat in the long fast if you are doing food without water recommendation is three days if you sense the presence of god you can push it to seven if you are going beyond seven add water don't go beyond 14 if there's no instruction so i think i've answered that question because of time oh my god i've exhausted all the time we can't even proceed but we will do that tomorrow now before we begin to pray because i really want us to pray today before we begin to pray i will need questions two questions from the hall two questions from the online people then we will begin to pray to god so this young man now was praying dry for for doing dry fasting for 21 days and my god what was that for what what are you looking for the spiritual things are not sprints they are marathon it's a marathon way it's something fasting is something that you will eventually do as a regular part of your life and when we say we live a fasted life there are some people that don't eat morning at all they don't eat afternoon at all some don't eat morning at all they only eat from afternoon and that's what they do and they don't call that one fast they just live in that's how they live just to maintain some level of um sensitivity just to maintain some level of sensitivity so you don't eat in the morning and i don't count that as a fast then when i want to now count the one that count as a fast i now take away the afternoon and then i eat in the evening because if i do three days dry it doesn't have any effect on me the one that works for me is a long fast anything from 40 100 200 eating once a day i know my spirit i know my makeup i know what works for me so i will not join you to do dry fast because i will not profit from it there were times during most of these times when we do iec conference i forgot to eat but that one is the holy ghost that came upon me and then the i forget i forget if i remember i can eat but i know days that i forgot the fast that works for me is six to six for 40 and above that one works for me. it takes time for my spirit to rise it takes time for me so do the one that is suitable to you you need to make a self-discovery of yourself of your don't try to be spiritual in the eyes of men just discover yourself i used to do three days dry three those days when i was in the university three days dry i don't get anything from it. just as if i suffer myself and come out and there's there's nothing but when i start 24 25 27 28 29 40. so i fast long before god comes there's one i did for almost a year and then i saw an angel for the first time 
we this, when we reach the advanced part of this lecture i will begin to tell us about um special encounters special encounters and there are several things you need to do to begin to get the special encounters but don't do them if you have not done the basic ones special encounters when i begin to seek direction i don't do try fast god won't tell me anything but when i begin to fast only eat once and i begin to go i begin to go i begin to go 35 40 50 60 72 73 Stood here like this. I tried to see him. He was like 20. <laughs> he has never appeared like that to me. So we'll talk about deep encounters. How what is a deep encounter? What do you expect? How do you how does it come? How do you know that there's a personality in your room that is not from hell? I mean a divine personality what is the protocol of engagement because you need to engage the person sometimes and that was what eli was trying to teach samuel he said if this thing happens again initiate the process because god doesn't speak much he only answers much speak long for thy servant here hallelujah yes two questions quickly and then we are going to pray I want us to pray today. I want I want to be very sure that we have solved the fasting question. The fasting question is solved. Yes, yes. Okay. If there is no question, then we can uh, begin to to pray. I want to be sure. We have solved the question. We have solved the question. There's a challenge in your life. You are trusting God for an, a quick intervention. The recommendation is three days without food. No water, no food. Just call on God. Not a very robust prayer point. Just say, you need this intervention. You need this hand to come. That thing, that thing will work. The thing that wants to fight you, it, it will be arrested. This is like a mathematical formula. I'm telling you, this one works like fire. In two days' time, something is about to happen and the effect will not be good to you. Just go on the fast. Okay. That was how righteous men those days reacted to situations. As they afflicted their soul before God. They were able to provoke his jealousy. Fasting is starving the flesh so that you can stuff the spirit. So as you are starving the flesh, you are draining the power and the voice of the flesh. In the same, as you are doing that, be supplying food for the spirit. Expose yourself to messages. Be reading the scriptures. Be in the atmosphere of worship. Just be doing that for three days. The strength you will come out with will be so much that the thing that you are afraid of will become afraid of you. No question from there. B. You have one? Bring it quickly. I don't want my time wasted. Then you begin to see strength will begin to come. Begin to come. When I start fasting for long and it goes beyond 80 days, it is most likely that God will send me an angel. Most likely, 60% likely that he will send me an angel. 60% likely. 60% likely. I've seen light. This world, a normal world, I've seen it shed light before for 25 minutes. And while I was building in the light, the Lord said, that the reason why I showed you this light is so that you'll be aware, you'll be conscious of the fact that I'm with you. I said, Kai, I love you. I didn't know that the reason why I did that was because I was going to go through persecution. Terrible persecution. And he did that to register 
something on an impression that I cannot deny. Some of the encounters you are going to have is going to be followed by terrible persecution. So God came and registered his presence. The persecution lasted for seven years. But I was able to survive because I could not deny that light. Heaven and earth shall pass away. They say, my word. How do we break a long fast? If you are doing the long fast the way I said you should do it, which is breaking every evening, you don't need any technology to break it. You break it normally. Nothing will happen to you. But if you do the one like um, the seven days dry fast because the presence of God came upon you and you were able to push it for seven days, then you need to look for liquid things to begin to take for, for one 24 hour day. And then your appetite will begin to come from the next day. But it's advisable for you to stay on the liquid level for two days and then on the third day your appetite will come back and you can visit from the DM. For the daily fast that can be broken in the evening, six to six, for a year, can someone engage? This is for married people. You, you already know the reason. So it's asking if that aspect can be introduced. <laughs> you have to introduce it all. Because there's a rule on this in the scripture. Don't go and stab your husband and say you are looking, you are, you are, you are wrong. You can engage. The answer is yes. Oh, I don't know if it's a brother or sister. Don't abstain. If that one doesn't affect your alignment. <laughs> May the Lord give you. <laughs> May the Lord give you the son. It does not affect alignment. It does not affect it. Yeah, you, are, you, you actually add strength. So make sure that you are not. Can we pray for a moment? Today, God will give you strength. Today, will give you strength. Hallelujah. <laughs> Chief Donatus, don't go and. Thank you so much, and I hope this clip really blesses your life so much. And also, we want to use uh, this opportunity to appeal to our audience out there watching us. Um, we have been receiving your messages about um, the lesson, why we are showing our face on the video. All right, please try to understand us. It's because of YouTube copyright and the reuse content. It has been some challenges we are having over the year so we decided to avoid it totally so please try to bear with us and may god almighty bless you amen